trip. Hey, thanks for joining me today on this little uh, trip that we're going on here in the Phoenix Valley. I've, this is a video I've been wanting to make for quite a while now where I really love movie theaters and I want to make sure that, you know, people keep on supporting them because they're, they're a haven for people like us, you know, people who love movies and want to share in that communal experience of enjoying art, you know, with a lot of people who also appreciate that same, you know, love for cinema. And so today what I wanted to do is just kind of give you a brief tour of some really unique theaters that are around in the Phoenix Valley, more specifically the East Valley, which is where more I'm located. You know, I made an executive decision at one point to not go on the western side of the valley because gas prices suck right now. Yeah! But one theater that I will highlight just very quickly that is on the west side, you know, a more unique independent type theater that people should go support is the West Wind Glendale Drive-In. You know, that is a theater that people can go to, you know, during the day, there's like a swap meet, there's a type of flea market you can go to, you know, to buy produce and a bunch of other things. But then at night, it transforms into a cinema, you know, one of a, of a bygone era, if you will, where you can go there and watch films on those, those massive drive-in screens with your vehicle. And of course, you know, you get that traditional experience out of it. The West Wind theaters are not specifically, you know, unique to Arizona, but I figured I should highlight it because out of all the theaters that are here located in the Phoenix area, it's the only one that is still an operating drive-in. And so if you want that kind of experience, it's definitely worth noting that it's out there and it's in uh, the Glendale area. Otherwise, what we're going to be doing today, you know, as much as I love theater chains like, you know, Cinemark or AMC or your Regals, those kind of things, I don't necessarily want to bring attention to those theaters because, you know, they're corporate entities. They have money. They can survive. Whereas, I think people need to be brought more to attention of, you know, the little guys. I own a small business myself, and, you know, I certainly appreciate when people watch out for me in that sense and, you know, want to support my ventures. And given that as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, there are a lot of things that hit hard against the, the, the movie industry, theater exhibition being one of them. Some theaters haven't survived, and I wanna make sure that those theaters that are still around and are trying to do their best to make ends meet and provide entertainment to loads of different people, that those theaters deserve a spotlight today. Not only that people here in the Phoenix Valley can know of cooler places to go to, but perhaps if you live in other parts of the country, you know, maybe I can bring to light the fact that, hey, there are other cool theaters that you can go check out in your local area too that are that are owned by regular people that have a true love for cinema. And I certainly hope that this will be a fun experience as we go visit what are gonna be seven theaters total with an extra stop at the end. And let's go ahead and have some fun. Our first stop will be here very shortly. All right, so this is the first stop on our little trip today. Roadhouse Cinemas. Now, this place has three locations overall. Uh, this being the main one here in Scottsdale, right around near where a Talking Stick Resort is. There are also locations in Tucson, and then they recently expanded to Colorado Springs as well. Now, I wanted to have this be the, the intro here because in terms of unique, independent, and very cool cinematic experiences you can have here in the Phoenix Valley, I don't want to try talking over the semi. But yes, in terms of unique experiences you can have at a cinema in the Phoenix Valley, I would say this is one of the, definitely one of the cooler ones because this place is very focused on providing a great cuisine while you sit down for a, the for a theater experience. You know, kind of like your Alamo Draft House sort of a thing where you go inside, you sit down, you can press a button and a waiter will come up to take your order. You know, and you can get your basic like movie things like soda, popcorn, candy, ice cream and the works. But if you wanted like a full legit meal, you know, we're talking like salads, burgers, pizzas, bowls, all kinds of different things that you can think of. This actually is like a place where you can get a legitimate meal out of it and it tastes really good. And another 
key factor in that as well is that they have an on-site chef to where every now and then they'll change up their menu, you know, either to fit the season, to fit certain films that they are showing, and then just to keep it, keep it interesting. And of course, if you wanted to come in to just have a meal and not necessarily watch a movie, they have a full service bar right inside. You can order gelato at the same counter you can get your movie tickets from. And yeah, I think you can get an equally good experience here watching a movie as well as eating something. And in addition to that, something that I recently found out that I think is really cool is that they have these small theater rooms called screening rooms. They have these more intimately sized theater auditoriums where, you know, you generally have between like eight to 13 people can fit inside the small space to, to view a film. But it's not one of those things where you have to pay an exorbitant fee in order to have this room all to yourself. You can purchase tickets for it just like any other, you know, auditorium in the building. And so if you wanted to have, you know, a more reserved space to where you don't really have to worry about a whole lot of other people shouting or making a lot of disturbances, you have that opportunity, especially if potentially you wanted to get your whole family together, buy up all the tickets in that room, and then go see a cool summer blockbuster together or something. That's kind of what we have planned in mind for when Indiana Jones 5 comes out in a few weeks. You know, me and my buddies were talking about rounding up a group together, you know, renting out one of those screening rooms and then just react however we want to when that movie plays. And so if you, if you are living in more so like the Scottsdale, Tempe, maybe like North Mesa area, this is a great place if you want a good ex experience watching a movie. While also if you want to also combine a dinner experience with that as well, I don't think you'd be disappointed. So for this next stop, or actually the next three stops I should say, you know, I did mention at the beginning of this video that I wouldn't, we wouldn't be going to any of the major chains, and that still is the case. Although I am making an exception for a chain that is actually more local to Arizona, and is actually family owned and also a private business, which I prefer highlighting, and that would be Harkins Theaters. Now the Harkins Theater chain, they really are the best of the best, you know, in terms of overall quality here in Arizona. You know, maybe they don't have the best concessions, or maybe they might not have, like, the best overall, you know, film community vibe. But I say if you want, like, the best of all kinds of things, you know, the best average quality for all things that you're looking for in a film experience, like the convenience of it, um, the exhibition of the actual films themselves, and then the, the food that you might eat, I'd say Harkins trumps them all. And also Harkins has had just a very storied history here in the Phoenix Valley. They've been here in the Phoenix area for almost 90 years at this point. And some of their theaters are have been around for the longest. And then they also just have a very strong core here in Arizona in supporting the, the film community here. You know, supporting film festivals and whatnot, and then film premieres and then just being able to support people in their love for cinema and whatnot. And so I'll be highlighting three specific Harkins theaters all in a row for the next three locations that we'll be visiting, starting with the Harkins Shea 14, which we're about to come out to here in a minute. All right, so this is the Harkins Shea 14. You know, the thing that I really like about coming to this theater for is not only for aesthetic purposes. I mean, you can see it kind of has like a Pueblo architectural look to it, which is definitely more of a standout design compared to other Harkins locations. You know, as you can see in the screenshots I've just put on the screen. But also, this place is well known for being basically a crossroads between a typical cinema where you can go see like your average blockbuster or other Hollywood production, and then more of your art house and independent type films. You know, it's not one of those theaters that really differentiates between the two. If you wanted to have either one of those experiences, you could come watch your regular movie, but then otherwise, if you wanted to come see one of those theater, one of those films that's only going to be around for a couple of weeks, you know, maybe it has a lower budget, but it's by a filmmaker that you really like, chances are this theater probably has that as well. You know, just this past week, um, this was the only theater, practically the only theater left in the valley that was playing Blackberry by Matt Johnson. And so I went here with the buddy. It was a great experience, you know, not only for the fact that it was a great movie, but also it was just very cozy. I like the fact that you can walk in there and just like how the architecture is certainly distinguishable from other Harkins theaters, you walk into the lobby 
And it almost feels like a theater that's been locked in time because there are so many cinemas nowadays that definitely have more of a modern geometric and sort of muted color palette to them. Whereas this place, it's a lot more colorful. It definitely implements a lot of those neon light displays inside and it feels like it's trapped in the 90s, which I love. It reminds me of the old Harkins theaters from back in the day, you know, such as Harkins Fiesta 5, rest in peace, where you go in there and you just get the sense that it's just of an era, of a time gone by, you know, reminds me of my childhood in a way. And so that's certainly a great to experience when I get to walk in there and I'm reminded of the vibes that, you know, I would feel when I would come into a theater as a kid. But now I get to experience the, the joys of cinema as an adult here in this place. And so that's definitely a great benefit of going in there, you know, to be able to experience all of that as well as you know, being able to find movies that are more unique and different compared to what you would normally expect from a movie. But also, I think what makes this theater stand out as well, on top of it being an art house cinema, is that it's the home to the Scottsdale International Film Festival, which is held usually like late October, early November on an annual basis. I've only gotten to go once so far, but that one time that I did go was an awesome experience because one of the films I saw there was Knives Out. And that was about two and a half weeks before it released to the general public. Man, the experience of being able to see that so early before everyone else know that something great was coming and being able to tell people about it and have that opportunity to see it with a packed crowd where everyone was just, the vibes were so strong. Yeah, I really, I really enjoyed that. And so I have a lot of great movie watching memories here. And I think for anyone who genuinely loves cinema, especially more independent and art house types, we'll find a home here. And so this is the second of three Harkins theaters that we're going to visit here in this video. This one being called the Harkins Camel View at Scottsdale Fashion Square. You know, as you can see by that logo up there in the, in the top right. Now, this theater right here is without a doubt the most luxurious cinema in the entire state of Arizona. But what I like about it is that even though, yes, it is indefinitely in an area in downtown Scottsdale, sorry, tree, where there is certainly going to be the expectation of paying a lot of money. In fact, the fact of the matter is, is that despite it being a luxurious space inside of there, the ticket prices aren't really as high as you might expect going into that. I mean, you know, a regular adult ticket would be somewhere around 14 or 15 bucks, which I think that's been the same price for roughly the same amount of time it's been open, which has been since 2015. A little bit of history with that though, this used to not be one big theater on the second floor of this mall. It used to be two separate theaters that were all in pretty close proximity to each other. They were first the Harkins Camel View 5, which was over here on a Goldwater Boulevard. And then there was also the Scottsdale Fashion Square Theater inside the mall itself on the base floor near the food court. Before 2015, I want to say maybe like at the end of 2013 or somewhere in 2014, Harkins decided to close both of those theaters down, Camel View being exclusively art house cinema and then the Fashion Square one being like your typical blockbuster Hollywood type movies. They closed them both down and then decided to basically combine them into one signature location that offers up both. Kind of like the Shea Theater that we just visited, you know, you can definitely find the best of both worlds there where you will find your typical blockbusters but also more independent cinema if you so choose. The Camel View Theater in particular, usually getting the more quote-unquote high-profile independent the movies before the rest of the Harkins Theaters get the spillover from those movies. And so if you want to, if you kind of have the fear of missing out, I would say this is the theater to go to if you're wanting to check out some of those cooler releases before they get sent to other theaters. Um, but I also just really like the fact that it's very nice inside. It's very aesthetically pleasing. It's almost kind of like Harkins Corporate's signature location where you can just tell that like, you know, if the head honchos at Harkins wanted to show people around and kind of show what Harkins is all, all about, that's where you would go. You know, the, the ceilings are huge. You know, there's very, very aesthetically pleasing architecture inside. They have a very nice lounge bar you can go visit. But also if you walk around, you know, of course there's a lot of like, you know, state-of-the-art displays and um, theater projection and all this stuff, but it also has 
some very cool memorabilia that you can find if you look around. You know, if you if you have a keen eye, you can notice, you know, the Fantasia Mickey um, magician's hat in there, along with the brooms that are chasing around, chasing around him. You'll also find images from various movies like Taxi Driver and Amelie that have been etched onto the walls. I'll show you in some of these screenshots. And yeah, if you want a theater that definitely has that luxurious vibe, but is also still a roughly affordable place to go see a movie, Camel View's great. And it's also nestled inside a really cool mall. And so if you wanted to have a combination of an experience where you can go see a film such as that, and then go walk around the mall for a little bit afterwards and have a nice date, I definitely think it provides that good experience. All right, I apologize if there's a little bit of traffic noise in the background, you know, where we're located right now. There's a big freeway wet over there, but I digress. That right there is the Harkins Arizona Mills IMAX. It'll be the third and final Harkins Theater that we uh, visit here today in this video. I wanted to bring in this one up in particular, not because like the Arizona Mills Theater itself is really all that special. I mean, you know, it's just kind of your standard uh, Harkins Theater that you'd go to, you know, your standard multiplex. But that Air IMAX in particular, is definitely the standout feature of this particular um, particular theater here at the Arizona Mills Mall because that IMAX is not only one of the few IMAX theaters in the country that is like a full size, meaning that it's not just like a giant screen, but also it's the appropriate dimensions or aspect ratio where the dimensions of the screen are what true IMAX film would look like. That is also one of, I think, actually 19 IMAX auditoriums in the entire country that has an IMAX 70 millimeter projector. Meaning, say, if you wanted to go see Oppenheimer, you know, Christopher Nolan's upcoming movie, in the exact way that he intended, then if you live in Arizona, this is the only place where you're going to be able to get that true experience from because you'll have the correct projector, you'll have the correct dimensions to where you can see the entire breadth of the image. And on top of that, that screen is huge. It is 80 feet tall. It's the largest screen in the entire state. And yeah, it definitely is a place where if you want that true giant movie experience from whatever you're watching, you know, the auditorium is large, you know, you can fit a large number of people but also the screen isn't enormous with excellent resolution, great sound. You know, they often talk about how at the IMAX you really feel the movie as you're watching it. That's a place where you really will feel it. And that's been the case when I've seen Mission Impossible Gross Protocol back in 2011. Such was the case when I saw Dunkirk back in 2017, Avengers Endgame in 2019 on opening night. And yeah, we plan on going to see Oppenheimer like I said, um, on that weekend that comes out in 70 millimeter. And so I definitely think if you want a genuine IMAX experience and you live here in the Phoenix Valley, that's the place to go. Okay, this is the Majestic Tempe. Now it's one of three locations under the Majestic label. Um, three locations being here, like I said, in Tempe around rural and baseline. But then we also have one that's in Mesa, far, far east Mesa near the Mesa Gateway Airport as well as one in South Chandler. Now the thing about these theaters is that they originally were the Alamo Drafthouse cinemas here in the Arizona, in the Phoenix area. However, as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, the, the owners of these three buildings, you know, filed for bankruptcy and basically in an effort to stay financially solvent, they had to drop the Alamo Drafthouse merchandising label, or yeah, they just had to draw drop the name Alamo Drafthouse from their theaters so that they could start in operating independently. So now they're known as Majestic. Now, freaking semis. Where was I? Yes, Majestic Theaters. So for all intents and purposes, these theaters are basically still an Alamo draft house, just without that name. So you'll pretty much get the same exact experience that you would at an Alamo draft house. You know, the great customer service. Um, you can sit in a chair and you can order a table service food while you're sitting in your seat, the likes of which is really good stuff. 
Um, but also, Majestic is great because it really does feel like, despite its size and, you know, definitely being of a more populist type of cinema, it is a place where you can go and feel like you're part of a genuine community. You know, much like some of the other cinemas that we talked about in this video, it comes as a crossroads between being somewhere where you can go see modern blockbusters, like recently I saw Bullet Train here, but also if you want to see something a bit more unique, or if you want to see an older film as part of like a monthly series, they offer those as well. There are tons of different curated programs that they have in order to see a bunch of different movies across different genres, but also um, under special circumstances as well. One of my favorite series that they host here is called Cinematary, where every Tuesday they select um, a horror film, and then they'll have a group of people teamed up with some local stores in, in order to offer merchandise giveaways. You'll walk in, you know, they hand you a raffle ticket, and then you can win things like signed posters, memorabilia, um, exclusive Blu-rays, you know, all that kind of stuff. And that's not the only kind of event that they have. You know, some of the locations they do, like Anna Mondays, which are, as the name suggests, Monday events where they show anime films. And again, there are giveaways. Sometimes they partner up with ASU in order to show a film, but then have some kind of intellectual discussion and Q&A afterwards. And then sometimes they do events like showing The Room, or they'll show the Rocky Horror Picture Show late one night every month. You know, I think you kind of get what I'm getting at here in the sense that Majestic is a place where if you really do want to feel like you're part of the film community here in the area, you probably aren't going to get any better of a location for that kind of experience than here. It's why I keep coming, and I think that's why if you're in the Tempe, Chandler, or East Mesa areas, you definitely should check it out as well. All right, the Pollock Tempe Cinemas. Now, why is it called that? Well, this is a second-run theater that was developed by a local, but very well-known real estate developer named Michael Pollock. Now, to answer another question you might be having now that I just said that, what exactly is a second-run theater? Well, let me explain it this way. So what a first-run theater is, is basically, if you imagine a pie, if you imagine like the theater revenues as this pie, when a brand new movie such as like, you know, a Marvel film comes to one of these first run theaters, the movie studio will take, say like two thirds of the pie. All of that ticket revenue will go to the movie st theater exclusively, or I'm sorry, the movie studio exclusively. And then everything else that remains is left for the movie theaters to take for themselves. And so that's why you'll often see why tickets are so expensive, but also concessions are so expensive because those theaters will only make so much money off the ticket sales, and so they need to boost their revenues with concessions. Now where second run theaters come into play with that is for, for movies that had already spent their due course in that first run theater, you know, maybe it's like two or three months after that movie first premiered, film studios at that point will probably have released the movie on Blu-ray or you know, Vudu or Amazon or whatever so that people can watch at home. Now these theaters is they can rent these movies and then that's the, that's the take that the studios get is just the fees for renting out the movies. And then these theaters can charge whatever they want in order to earn back their more ticket revenue while also still selling concessions and whatnot. Thankfully, Tempe Cinemas is, you know, a pretty cheap alternative, you know, in order to go in and seeing a movie right when it first comes out because they sell tickets for $3.50 a piece. And that's if you're a kid, an adult, whatever, which is great, you know, if you want something that's a bit more discounted. In addition, you probably noticed some of these little electronic marquees and they've shown, you know, the titles for movies such as like Beauty and the Beast, The Lion King, the original Star Wars. And that's the cool thing about Pollock Cinemas is that you don't have to necessarily go see something new. On occasion, they'll also bring back those older classics so that it brings back people you know, say if some 30-something mom with three kids wants something to do with their kids to make them shut up in the middle of the afternoon, they can take them to the theater and there you go. Otherwise, you know, it's cool to visit this location because inside you'll find a lot of cool neon lighting. They have a bunch of different memorabilia, such as signed photographs of different celebrities. They'll have life-sized, sometimes even bigger, statues of various characters from many popular movies. They have a full-fledged arcade right in the front. And it just has a great 
old timey, well not old timey, but you know what I mean. More retro in the sense that like 90s is retro, <laughs> but it definitely has that great vibe to it when you go in, while also having a more modern experience in the sense that you have reserved seating, online ticketing, you know, everything feels fresh and clean, and the concessions are decently, decently priced. And so if you are wanting something at a bit more discounted rate, but you know, not sacrificing the quality of the movie experience, there you go. visit this place um, not necessarily because it's like um, something that's based out of Arizona I think it's I think the company in and of itself is based out of Utah but there are multiple locations here in the valley and so it feels local enough especially since it's like um, centralized to the southwestern United States and so the thing about fat cats what makes it so distinct I'm not sure if you're able to see that over there but it's not only a cinema but it's basically like, you know, a main event type of location where you go there and there's a bowling alley, there's an arcade, there's a grill where you can order food, and there also happens to be a cinema in there as well. And so it's one big building that kind of mashes everything all together to where if you did want to have an all-encompassing experience doing all those things, you can. That leads to Fat Cats not being so much like a haven for movie lovers, I guess you would say, or at least, you know, I guess more of a cinephile type of movie lover, because this company does view the experience of watching movies more so as an attraction. Like if you were to look on their website, they pretty much literally spell that out. But there is a very practical sense to coming here to watch a movie, at least from like a date perspective. See, like just about a couple of months ago, I went here with my wife to do a date, a spontaneous one at that, where we played an hour's worth of bowling. It was like three games or something. And then right after that, we got dinner elsewhere. And then we came right back, um, ca caught a screening of the Dungeons and Dragons movie. And that just worked out perfectly great. You know, um, we were able to have a lot of fun in a short succession of time and everything was in one centralized place. And so it, it made everything really convenient in that sense. But yeah, if you're looking for a place that definitely gives a lot of recurring benefits to the experience of return visits at a movie theater, Fat Cats offers things like, you know, souvenir cups, souvenir buckets of popcorn even. Their concessions are relatively decently priced. And they also offer, you know, an option to have food from the grill delivered right to your seat if you wanted to do that as well. Reclined, um, reclining chairs, reserved seating, the whole nine yards. And so, yes, it may not be the place you might want to go if you're looking to have kind of like a communal neighborhood, um, family-run sort of a theater experience, but it is a very cool one place to go to, especially now that there are multiple locations here in the Phoenix Valley. This one here is in North Mesa. There's also one in Gilbert. There's also one in Queen Creek. And then they only just barely recently opened one in Surprise as well for anyone who's on that side of the Phoenix Valley. So, yeah, I think Fat Cats is definitely worth checking out, especially if you want a place that has multiple entertainment options all in one spot. And that's that. We're now going to move on to one final location, but not quite what you expect. So the last location for today that we're, that we're going to be showing you is, you know, as you can very well see, it is very jank. It is obviously not a movie theater right here. But there's a reason why I wanted to end here at this location, is because back in the day, you know, in the late 70s, early 80s, it was home to a theater, an independent one at that, called the Westwood Cinema. Now, the Westwood Cinema, it was a place where my, my parents worked at when they were in high school, and it's actually where they met. You know, my mom was the concessionist, was a concessionist at the time. My dad was a projectionist. And you know, so they obviously worked in different places in the theater, but it's where they, it's where they met. It's where they fell in love and developed that relationship together. And 
in a very real sense. Were it not for, you know, locations like that, defunct as they may be, now it's like a, whatever it is, a nightclub, they have a history. Were it not for that place, you know, I literally wouldn't be here. These small movie theaters that are run by, you know, average everyday people that are just trying to to make ends meet, but also to share their love of cinema with anyone who wants to come and enter their front doors. And sadly enough, there are a lot of theaters out there or that used to exist, but were impacted by a number of different things, whether it was economic downturn or most recently the COVID-19 pandemic. In the past 10 or so years, there have been a lot of independent cinemas here in the Phoenix Valley that have since gone away but were huge staples in the area. There used to be the drive-in that was in Scottsdale, specifically around McKellips and McClintock, where I didn't really go there as much as I would have liked. But that place, it was great. You know, you can go and have a experience going to a drive-in theater that was really close by. No more. There were a lot of people who loved going to downtown Phoenix, to the film bar, where there was a great film community there where people could watch any sorts of different movies of various genres, would also enjoy drinks and some good food. Nope. As of a few years ago, no longer exists. Then there's the Harkins Valley Art, the oldest operating theater in Arizona. It had opened its doors in 1940 and was known for being this tiny one-screen theater right by ASU where they would always host, you know, art house films every single week. Not the kind of movie that your average moviegoer would go to see, but it was nice. It was a good little addition to the community. I even had the opportunity to go see the movie Columbus back in the day, where the star of the movie was there, and she did a Q&A with a film critic there who's a friend of mine. It's been closed ever since the pandemic happened, with no potential reopening date in sight. These are many different stories of locations, of movie theaters, that used to be vital parts of the film community, but just culture at large here in Arizona that people won't ever get to experience again. And so theaters here that now exist, ones that are independent or corporate-wise, go support them. Even if you don't think there are a lot of movies right now that are appealing to you, if some come out that seem genuinely interesting, go out and support them. Go with your friends. Find a place where you feel comfortable at because you never know what kind of memories you're going to make for yourself, but also what kind of memories you're going to support for those who work there. Maybe you'll find another chance to have people live and work together like my parents did back in the day. Anything that you can do to support your local cinema will be anything in order to support local arts. Anything that you can do to support that better things will be for everyone in the long run. And ultimately that's why I wanted to give you this little tour, to let you know that there are theaters out there that still exist, but we shouldn't let them endure the same kind of fate. In any case, if you appreciated watching this video, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel and join the notification squadron if you don't want to miss out on future videos. I can't always say they'll be like this, but I appreciated the chance to be able to share these many different unique theaters with you today, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.